Business Brain, episode 470 for Casual Friday, July 28th, 2023. And welcome to Business Brain, the show where we pick a topic. We pick a couple of topics, either or you pick a topic. You send it into us at feedback at businessbrain.show. And we analyze it from a lot of different angles such that we each get the opportunity to tune our business brains together, making us better at all the things we do and really helping ensure we get to keep living those charmed lives that we love. Our sponsors for this episode include Notion.com slash Business Brain, where you can go and try Notion projects for free today, and PearlDiver.io, where you get to find out who it is that's visiting your website. We'll talk more about those in a little bit. For now, uh, I don't know where I am today, but uh, I'm Dave Hamilton. <laughs> and I'm Shannon Jean, somewhere out here in California. That's sure. Really, as well, since we're recording this a little early, yeah, so yeah. we can enjoy uh, Casual Friday away from... yeah. Our computers and our phones, no phone Friday. No phone Friday. Oh, promoting. I like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I um uh, I recently had an experience, Shannon, that that was immediately obvious that we needed to talk about here on the show. We had uh, all right. as we do every couple of years, we had somebody come out and service the air conditioners. We have oh, we have some contractor someone that, story. Contractor okay. story. Yep. So yes. uh they service the air conditioners in the house and in the office. Great, fine. So uh they, they came out on a Friday. And the, the guy that was here was nice. He was the Eeyore guy I mentioned. Uh, oh, yeah. He, right. He was fine, but whatever. Uh, the next day, I opened up the, I was like, I said to Lisa, did he change out the filter? And I, I may have even mentioned this on the show because the, the, the important thing was something I found a week later. But I, I looked and he had, uh, he had changed out the air conditioner filter. It just so happened I had it on my calendar to do like that Saturday. Cause I change them every six weeks and yeah. I open it up. We have 14 inch wide filters in our, our house. He had taken a 16 inch wide filter from his truck oh. or whatever and like ripped off two inches of this and, and stuffed it in, in and jammed it in there. Yeah. Wow. And I was like, okay. And so I took a picture of it and threw it away and put one of our filters in. I'm like, I'm not going to like, I, yeah, I don't know what this is all about, but it looks yeah. like the pieces of this thing are just going to get pulled into the system. And I don't know that I want that in there. So yeah, yeah. in fact, that's kind of the things I want the filter to filter out. So, um, so I, I, I did that and it was like, you know, whatever I'll, I'll email them and I'm, I want to ask them cause they had chosen a different like rating of filter than we found works with our system. So I wanted to ask their opinion on that. So I was like, okay. ah, I'll, I'll email them at some point and, and ask, and I'll share the picture then, but it's not a big deal, whatever, you know, about a week later, in fact, exactly a week later, we're sitting in our living room. It had been a hot day. And my wife's like, I really dislike that our living room, it feels so stuffy. It's always warmer than the rest of the house, which has sort of been a truth ish in our house for a while, but it felt more than that in this moment. All right. Like, okay. yeah, I, I agree. I'm like, maybe when they were cleaning the system, they adjusted how much air was flowing to this zone. And, uh, you know, maybe that's the issue. So I knew the system was on. And I could, cause I could hear the, the system running and I put my hand under the uh, filter or under the register, you know, the vent and there was zero air flowing out. Oh, and I'm like, bad. oh my gosh, they closed it. Like what's going on? So I checked the other vents quickly. I'm like, yeah, okay. So it has been flowing. I go up into the attic. Now it's like, this is like nine, 10 o'clock at night or whatever. I go up and I see the, uh, the, the duct for that vent had been removed completely oh. from the system and oh. was just blowing nice cold air into my attic. Oh, that's uh, nice. Oh yeah. Super happy. <laughs> so yeah. obviously I took a picture of this too. And yes. I, it was, it was a hundred percent obvious to me that this was something the guy did intentionally. And I don't know why wow. somebody, I posted it on Facebook. Somebody said, Oh yeah, that's an old trick for those of us in the South. Uh, when working on air conditioners in the oh, attic. Oh, yes. You want so, to keep cool. So you keep yep. yourself cool because it could be 150 degrees up there. You know, yeah. like I get that, but you don't yep. forget, like have a checklist, right? You know, and uh, it, clearly he took it off for some reason. I mean, I could see the tape was like ripped by a human. It wasn't 
just an accidental, like I knocked it off. I mean, it's been on for 17 years. It didn't just somehow magically fall off. Right. And so I, so I fixed it. Obviously I just put it back on and, and suddenly everything was better. <laughs> no great surprise. And the next day I, I chose to to do this via email because I wanted to send the pictures to show like the, the filter and this thing. And I also wanted to give the company an opportunity to direct this to the person in charge of the Oh crap role. Right. And <sighs> every right. company has the Oh yeah. crap role, right? Like you are, made aware of something bad. It could be this, a mistake that you, your company made. It could be something that happened, uh, you know, through no fault of your own, but there are those moments where you're like, Oh crap. Everyone in your company has an opinion as to who the Oh crap role is served by, right? Who is it in the company that gets it? It might, it's probably you, the business owner, but, you know, it might be in like in the case of this air conditioner company, it might be, say, the service manager or something. But someone that is adept at dealing with acknowledging a mistake that you made and or a bad scenario, even if it's not your fault, and yeah. figuring out how to get through it. And, it, you know, the two tokens of customer service. Oh, I was just going to ask that. Yeah. Are they using the two tokens? They should be. The guy <laughs> yes, The should. guy didn't entirely use the two tokens. Like, I, you know, he was fine, but he wrote back. He's like, oh, I can't imagine. He's like, it must have just fallen. Off. He, for, he apologized. But he's like, yeah, I can't see any reason why he would have, you know, taken that off. And I'm like, same, but be that as it may, he did. You know, I didn't reply that way. He, But the guy, I said to them. Look, here's these two things. I want you to come out and look at my, first of all, my repair handiwork and redo that properly because I don't know how to reconnect a duct properly. You know, oh, I just yeah, did sure. it. But also I want you to go over everything that he might've done because now we've identified two corners that he cut. Uh, how many others? I don't know what to look for. You do. Would you please come out and, and take a look? And the guy was like, yep, I'll schedule the time. So he owned it at that level. And then, of course, but he was he was like, oh, I don't think this is a mistake. And oh, the filter thing, it's not that big of a deal. I'm like, oh, OK, don't ever say that. You know, uh, that's not the two tokens. But when he got to the house, he leaned in heavily on the two tokens thing. <sighs> uh -huh, he picked good. up that this is awful. I have no excuse for this. This is terrible. I know it's your first time working with us. Like he did the whole, sh the whole spiel. It was like, ah, okay. All right, Smart. Yeah. Smart. Yeah. 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 You have an opportunity to do this, you know? Yeah. So figure That's out good. in your company who people think holds the oh crap role. I, I think that's that's sort of my my lesson here is uh, because he, because someone does. And uh, yeah, and, yeah. And maybe that's the best problem solver. Yes. And, and you know, you may have to do it in the beginning. Of but, course. You know, as you grow your business, uh, getting somebody in that role is really important. All right. Look, if you're like me, some days getting work done can feel impossible. And that's especially true if you're tracking tasks, writing docs and setting goals in three different places. If this sounds like you, too, then, hey, listen up. I have an answer Notion is an incredible tool that makes it so much easier to make progress on your projects. And of course, we like to be productive, don't we? Well, today I'm excited to share that they just launched Notion Projects, which includes new powerful ways to manage projects and leverage the power of their built-in AI features too. Notion Projects combines project management with your docs, your knowledge base and AI so you can stop jumping between tools and stop paying too much for them tool. This is perfect for your business brain. Trust me on this. You're definitely going to want to try it out. It's super customizable. You can view projects any which way, like as a timeline, a table or a Kanban board. And Notion AI, of course, helps you automate all that tedious overhead. Do your most efficient work with Notion projects. You can try it for free today at Notion.com slash business brain. All lowercase, that is, notion.com slash business brain. And when you use our link, of course, you're supporting our show and using your business brain, which is great. So go to notion.com slash business brain and our thanks to Notion for sponsoring this episode. 
Also, hey, do you still wonder who all those people are visiting your website but never convert and then just disappear? Well, good news. Our sponsor, Pearl Diver, is the game-changing tool that top professionals are raving about. Pearl Diver is a cutting-edge platform that provides in-depth visitor identification. This means you get to uncover valuable insights about your website visitors. You can know their names, their emails, their phones, their titles, and their company details. And this means you never miss out on the opportunity to engage with your hottest leads because Pearl Diver matches your email interactions with identified website visitors, providing the insights you need to close your next deal. With Pearl Diver, you get to supercharge your marketing and sales strategy. You don't have to settle for guesswork. So dive into your visitor data with Pearl Diver and revolutionize your customer acquisition game. If you're ready to make waves, visit PearlDiver.io and try Pearl Diver today. Again, that's PearlDiver.io. Try Pearl Diver today and our thanks to Pearl Diver for sponsoring this episode. All right, uh, wrapping up Casual Friday, Shannon, let's talk about some tools that we use maybe yeah. in our business. Yeah, I love oh. revisiting this uh, yeah. tools uh, every once in a while because even though some of them are the same, uh, I usually add a few things and I think it's worth uh, worth discussing, especially on a end of the week you know, podcast. Oh. Um, the first one I've mentioned uh, a bunch of times, but I still rely on it every day is FileMaker. Oh, man. Uh, FileMaker Pro. Yep. And, you know, if you manage data, and I know you do, uh, if you want a customizable database that will jump through hoops and is easy to manage for a non-technical person, um, especially the new, if you get the new version, like the FileMaker 2023, yeah, uh, it, it's, it's crazy. And I love that they still sell a single license that you don't have to pay a subscription for if you, if the if, if you, you want just to do it that way for yourself. Yeah, yeah. 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 I love that. Uh, yeah. So for me, that's the that's the first one. Oh no, um, File FileMaker is is on my list too. I you know, I I know it's it fe if you have been aware of the fact that FileMaker has been around for as long as it has, it might feel like antiquated software. There's something better. If you found something better, let us know because I yeah. have not. Uh, it, you know, for what it does, it is fantastic. And, uh, yeah, I, yep. It, it is great. Yep. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, for me, the next one, it sounds simple, but it is critically important to my workflow. It's the Apple notes app. And it, I just can't stress enough how awesome it is for scanning documents, sharing data across different, uh, you know, to different people. Um, managing your ideas, uh, lists. I mean, it's, it's just an incredible and undervalued app that if you're in the Apple uh, ecosystem, I, I just, I, c I couldn't live without it. Uh, we're going to post in the show notes a, uh, a productivity framework for using notes that it'll, it'll blow your mind. Uh, multiple folders, nested, automated folders, some really great stuff that uh, you can watch this uh, guy's video. And I don't have his name in front of me, but we will link it in the show notes. But, uh, I, yeah, I need to check Apple this out. Apple Notes is amazing. I, yeah, I'm I, um, give it to you right now. It's interesting. I was going to add Apple Notes for the first time to our tools discussion here. We recently, I recently moved our podcast workflow for Mac Geek Gab out of Evernote and over mm -hmm. to Apple Notes. Primarily because Evernote has stopped supporting Apple Script, and I've got a couple wow. of Apple Scripts that I use to get things into notes and to manage things just to make my workflow a little more efficient. I can do it without it, but it's better with it. And uh, we've been sort of limping along with Evernote's diminishing Apple Script support over the years, and I finally moved it to Apple Notes because Apple Notes is so much more robust now than it used to be. I can share oh, a yeah. notebook with someone else or multiple yep. other people. We can collaborate. Uh, it, it, you know, it, it, it really has matured to a point where it's a fantastic tool. The only sort of asterisk that I would put on there is that it is Apple only, you know, it's yeah. not like Evernote or Microsoft OneNote where it is cross platform. Uh, so if you need it to be cross platform, it's not for you, but otherwise Apple Notes it really has become 
a a world class business product if you want it to be. But it can also be a very yes. simple, basic note taking app that gets out of your way. It's it, it really is to me the epitome of Apple's software design because it, yeah. it does everything I need it to do and it will do everything you need it to do too. Even if you don't need the complexity that I need, or even if you need more complexity than yeah. I need, right? Like it's, I, I, it, yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah. I just scanned like a 42 page document into notes and it's automated. Oh, it's yeah. like, put the next document out, put the next, put the next page, put the next page. But I mean, it's just, it's mind blowing how easy it, it is and how, uh, how detailed it can be if, if you want it to be. Absolutely. Yeah, no, it's, yep, it, yep. I, I can't wait to watch this video. When's the episode going to be over? No, never mind. Never mind. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. That's right. Uh, you can watch it sooner. I just posted the link for it. Yeah, yeah. Slack. So, so far we and, have talked about two products that are either Apple or wholly yeah. owned by Apple. So wh what's next? Yeah. <laughs> well, I, it's an Apple product, but I'm, I'm, I know they have one on, you know, Android and Windows sure. ever, but it's my reminders app. Mm. Um, I'm constantly shocked that, not more of my associates and business partners and vendors and friends are not picking their phone up and saying, remind me to X because we're always talking about things to do and, or, Oh, I will follow up. I'm going to do this. I'm dead. And that I, you know, we, I always have my phone with me. So picking up the phone and just, Hey, remind me tomorrow at 9am to send these documents to X boom. Yep. And then the next thing I remember, remind me tomorrow to, you know, I love, you know, Time flexing is a huge luxury yep. and I, I feel blessed and privileged that I have it. So when I'm walking around a piece of property or I'm traveling, I'm constantly using my business brain, thinking of ideas, this kind of thing. And if I don't put it in a note, I put it in a reminder, remind me to do this, remind me about that. I mean, it's just the reminders apps are unbelievable it's like your ai assistant if you will on a very simple level but they're really powerful I, and i will highlight something that you said several times in your examples add a date to your reminders it, and oh, yeah. i i share this because of the way my brain works with reminders if you if you were to just say hey remind me to call shannon it will put a reminder call shannon but it will be way at the bottom of the list because you didn't yes. it's undated so yeah, date off, and time you can do time too. I don't use yeah. time, but yeah, yeah, I certainly I, yeah. use data. I'll say, remind me today even. Yeah. And okay. it'll come back and say, I've put this on for tonight. And it's like, yeah, whatever it's on for today. Yeah. Like, you know, it's, it's, it's fine. But, uh, but I use it and, and I use it more often with Siri than I do without Siri for capturing data. Um, mm, sure. you know, because I, like you, I can do it while I'm walking around. I can do it in the car. Uh, where I'm having that downtime, you know, that, that hypnotic time, uh, it, yeah. where ideas percolate and it's like, Oh, I got to dig into that, but not right now. So remind me tomorrow or remind me today and, and it will, yes. it will go off and do it. But yeah, yeah. It's great for capturing those things. I don't use the reminders app at all. I use reminders to capture it. It syncs to my iCloud reminders. And then I use an app called busy Cal to manage oh, those, nice. but it works the same. It's, you know, it's fine. It, I just, I just prefer the interface of busy Cal better, but I'm, I'm capturing with reminders via Siri all the time. That's which cool. Is great. Yeah. 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 I have yeah. a new one that I really like that I've been using. Uh, I think I mentioned it here maybe a few months ago. It's an app called rewind uh, and it's rewind.ai. Yep. And this app sits on your computer and it basically, you give it permission to track you all day. All the information is local. It doesn't go up okay. to the cloud. It does, doesn't do anything. Yep. Um, and, but it tracks everything. So when I need to go back and say, I thought I searched, I was looking on the web for something. And yeah, you can search your history. Or uh, I was on a Zoom call and I think somebody mentioned this YouTube video for this. Well, all of that's searchable with oh. the Rewind app meetings, anything you do via your computer, FaceTime. And like I had a, a Zoom meeting on Sunday afternoon. After the meeting, I jumped into Rewind. It had the whole meeting uh, recorded because it's recording my screen. And it also had, of course, a transcript. And then when I said, hey, summarize this transcript, it gave me a 15 point you know, thing that I emailed all the participants within like a minute of the meeting ended and they all thought I was far smarter than I really am. Yeah. Right. Uh, that's they're, interesting. They're, they're, What's the yeah. pricing like on that? Well, I'm using the free version. Really? Um, and 
Yeah, it does that for free. And the pricing is they have it up here. There's a free, you get 50 total rewinds. Got it. So I'm still on that. Yep. 12 bucks a month is their basic plan. Okay. So at some point, it, it, assuming you continue I'm to get value pay. out of it, they'll yeah. you'll get to a point where it's like, okay, now you got to pay. Uh, yeah. All right. It's pretty cool. cool. And uh, I, maybe something else will come along, but uh, you know, their, their tagline is what if you had a perfect memory? Yeah. And that's kind of what it does is it, tr it's huh. tracking all this stuff. I love that it's localized. Um, it's good stuff. You ought to check it out. Oh yeah. Heck yeah, man. I'm putting this on the list for, we, we do segments on our Mac Geek Cab podcast. Oh yeah. Cool stuff found. And yeah. this is a hundred percent going to be on that. Yeah. And you know how we've talked about chat GPT and you can upload yeah. a PDF and then ask questions. Well, you can do the same thing. This ask rewind is you can ask questions about stuff that happened during your day. And it's yeah. like the, it's like a, a automated to did list, if you will. So right. I, right. I, I'm yeah. enjoying it. Yeah. Wow, check it out. That's awesome, man. All right. Yeah. You got, yeah, we're, we're going a little long here, but you got one more for I'm us. I'm just going to do one more. Great. And I'm going to, I'm going to bundle them together and okay. I'm going to say, uh, Twitter and Reddit, these, <laughs> these platforms, the two, the two platforms that have had major technological yes, issues correct, recently. <laughs> correct. However, you get past that and uh, uh, avoid anything you're not interested in, dive into the, the sections that you are interested, the topics that you want to learn about. Yeah. These, these sites are a master class in any topic. If I'm trying to learn how to build a deck. Yep. You know, and there's a whole deck forum on Reddit that will just blow your mind. And, you know, on Twitter, I'm not involved in any of the drama on that platform because sure. I'm involved in the small business, you know, uh, yeah. people no, you can, deal with Twitter, stuff and real estate. Yeah, Twitter's Amazing. been great for me. I, I just, I like you said, you you avoid it. You you choose not yeah. to follow the topics and the it. people and you train yeah. it. Where I've had problems with Twitter is just their their like technology, like we talked about a couple of weeks yeah. ago, just their technological Correct. stuff. I've been having, again, for the stuff I'm interested in, Mastodon has been fantastic. Oh, and I'm really, I'm curious about threads uh, from Instagram yeah. because threads, their plan is to integrate with Mastodon or federate with Mastodon is the, is the term to use. So it would, it would connect the two. Right. And when that happens, I think that that's going to be really powerful. So I'm, I'm no, eager. Yeah. I'm eager to see where it goes. Yeah. 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 And so using these for business, I mean, I know a lot of people, you know, it's social, it is a social network, but the connections that you can make, in fact, you know, as you are well aware, we often find topics uh, on oh, yeah. these platforms and we're connecting with uh, business people. We're going to have someone on the show in a couple of weeks that, we just recently featured featured a tweet thread. So, you know, it's just a great resource. Uh, ignore all the noise about Absolutely. them, you know, fine tune your, uh, your feed to give you really good stuff. And I, it, it's fantastic. Awesome. Sweet. Thanks for hanging out with us a little extra today on yeah. casual Friday, folks feedback at businessbrain.show. Send in your tools. What is essential to you for your day? We Do it right now. You, you don't have, even have to press pause because we're the episode's over, folks. You know, so uh, just send it in to us. Feedback at businessbrain.show. We'd love to hear from you. And uh, follow us on Twitter and Mastodon, and we'll put, a, we'll put links in, in all the places. So wherever you are, we are, and we'd love to hear from you there, too. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for checking out our sponsors. Of course, notion.com slash business brain, pearldiver.io. Keep living that charm life, will you? We'll see you next week. <laughs>